One, two, one, two. You know how we do with your boy BQ. Welcome to the Power Moves podcast. This is episode five and it's the final episode. This is the last uh, review I will be doing for NWA Power. Maybe, maybe just taking a break, but right now this is going to be my final podcast uh, covering NWA. So why is that exactly? Well, I do enjoy NWA and I'm not a, It's not a knock on the product, but as a, you know, a YouTuber and online marketer, I have to pay attention to my numbers and what my audience wants to hear. And I was hoping that I'd be do a pretty good job of transferring uh, my impact lounge audience who's used to my impact content over to the NWA because, you know, there's so many former TNA and impact stars on the roster Um, but that hasn't happened and, um, I'm not really in a place to start from scratch with something. You know, I was, I initially had a new channel coming out called club dynamite that I was going to be covering AEW. Um, but I kind of last minute decided against it just because even though I like AEW, I'm not passionate about it. It's just something I really enjoy watching. And I also kind of felt like okay I think I can actually build this a lot bigger and quicker than the impact lounge but again just wasn't in a place to start from scratch with something and let's face it, NWA powers numbers since episode one have you know drastically declined so YouTube wise it did half a million views and then another I think hundred million on fa- hundred thousand on Facebook you know, then after that, I went to about 300,000 and then the last, the next two were about 200,000 and this one's at like 150, but it's probably going to get up to 200,000. I think that's where they're at 200,000. Now, with that being said, as their numbers, you know, dwindle, so have, so have mine. And until I feel that, you know, they can do a solid you know, 400,000 on YouTube, that, that gives me more traffic and that gives me more people looking for the review. But as long as the numbers are lower, I can't really justify doing what I do. And so for those of you who listen to my reviews and my power moves podcast, you know, thank you very much. Hopefully I'll bring it back in the future, but this is just a decision I made for myself right now with where my life is at and where NWA is at as a company. So, you know, what makes NWA special? We talk about that all the time. People talk about all the time on social media and other podcasts. You know, it's, this is not a secret. This being said, are they niching down too, too low? Because the product that they are putting out. So, you know, the first episode is always going to get the most views. That's that's where the curiosity sets in. You know what I mean? So that's where all the views are going to come in. There. So I knew that episode number one was going to was going to be big. I didn't expect it to drop down, you know, 55, 60 percent, though, from where it's at. So now I think there's a really strong core audience for it. But I think even though there's a lot of things they are doing really good and they're really nailing it, I mean, if you think of this this uh, Cody promo on AEW where, you know, I'm not going to challenge for the title again if I don't win. Like, where do you hell, where the hell do you think that came from? You know, uh, Tim Storm. Now, this was different because Nick Aldis said you can't challenge for the title again if you, if you lose. But you remember with that stipulation and the passion behind it like that main event really made, meant something. And as many eyes as were on episode one of power, I think that played a role in, in, um, Cody's promo. I did. You can totally disagree with me, but I think it played a, played a huge role in it. Now, I think as good as that episode was, maybe it, 
you know, did NWA the service because since then they've, they haven't quite been able to, the show's been good, but they haven't had a match with that kind of emotion and sense of purpose in it, you know? So every episode since then has been really different. And then this, then they've been factoring more comedy in and, and everything. But, uh, you know, I think that that Cody promo it's really sounded familiar. But going back to what I said, I think there's a really strong core audience for it, but I also think they have to find a way to also appeal to a younger audience as well. You know, you're really niching down saying, hey, we're going to recreate this, you know, 80s feel, and an older crowd is really going to enjoy it. But let's say, for instance, I'm 40, okay? maybe down to like 35 people could really enjoy it but but from there you're 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 going to have a hard time tapping into that audience and the matches are the matches are really classic and everything but because you're not doing the flips and things that people are you know accustomed to that younger audience is not going to enjoy this as much so i do think that there has to be a game plan going forward. How how are we going to expand the audience? We had the curiosity numbers. Now we've settled into this two hundred thousand. That's probably where we're going to be on YouTube every week. How does it get bigger? How do we grow from there? So as far as these matches go, the Dawson's start off squash match, uh, two minutes long. And as I've said, this is I don't really care for the Dawson's. They don't do a whole lot for me, but you know they play their role well and I like when a tag team looks like a tag team so after the match Dawson's wanted a title shot and then Kingston and Homicide arrive and said you know they want a match with you guys and they you know, say hey, we lost fair and square there's a no DQ so good on you we want another match and we'll put our title shot on the line so nice stipulation and then the Dawson's like we'll think about it so that was kind of odd, but I don't know what Kingston and Homicide get out of that. Like they could have got a match at some point with them, you know. Or you can attack them backstage, you know, not backstage. But you can do run-ins and all that all you want. Like you can get your hands on them. It's not like you, you know, you can't. But you know that was the case with that, and you know, kind of it did set up for the main event that we that we got. And then Tim Storm has an interview and it's, it, you know, they've already kind of talked about this with him a little bit where, what are you going to do with your career? And then, you know, he said it would be an honor to hold these other titles, but, you know, it's still not the, the world title. And it seemed like he was going to kind of do the uh, retirement type of thing, but Nick Aldis came out that the, what the little exchange between them was really good. And those two are the NWA. But that little exchange between the two of them uh, was really good. And he said, don't say something you'll regret. And it felt very, very real, very heartfelt. So fucking love that. Thunder Rosa had her debut match versus Ashley Vox. Uh, they seem high on Ashley Vox. I don't, I don't quite see it yet. Thunder Rosa, on the other hand, uh, she's, she's definitely a star. I really like the drums because it adds something that the other stars don't have, especially because there's not music and you know what I mean? She had her uh, debut, by the way, yesterday for Combate Americas and she did lose in a unanimous decision. I didn't get a chance to watch the fight, but, um, you know, I heard she showed quite a lot of, you know, a lot of heart out there, a lot of effort and I heard she looked pretty good. So I look forward to hopefully catching that later, but she's, she's a real talented girl. Um, last episode, I talked about she wrestled Tessa Blanchard on WoW. Uh, Serpentine was a character. And I remember th thinking this was the best match on <laughs> women of wrestling I've ever seen. Uh, so she, she's super freaking talented. And um, she's a great addition to them. And it really breaks up the the women division and and everything that, you know, they're building with, with just standard characters. She she um she just adds something different. So after the match, uh, Rosa continues to beat her down. Then Marty Bell comes down. 
to make the save. And Marty Bell cuts this whole promo about being friends with Allison Kay and, you know, she's sick of people not, you know, believing in her. Like, this is good stuff because she was nothing like this in, in uh, Impact. Not, e- not even close. So this is a, a lot of growth for her, a lot of change for her. And then Allison Kay comes down and, you know, she gets attacked by Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa brings her in the ring and then Marty Bell has a opportunity to save her and she attacks her instead. So I didn't see that coming. So that adds a nice wrinkle into the women's division because even though Ashley Vox has wrestled more than any of the other women, there's definitely a Allison K, Marty Bell, Thunder Rosa storyline going here. So much like the tag team division, there's there's different people in the mix. Uh, Ricky Starks took on Aaron Stevens in a two out of three falls match. When they announced this, you know, because these matches have all been pretty quick. I knew there was going to be a quick roll up. I knew it. And it was the first part of the match. And even with a two out of three falls match, this match was still five minutes long. Um, just short. And they're, you know, they're building up Ricky Starks to be their, their star. And I talked about earlier about trying to appeal to a younger audience. So he's the one they're doing that with, I think. Uh, I'd say Thunder Rosa probably falls into that category. And I'm, hopefully they'll you know, introduce a couple other up-and-comers here that will, you know, that will reach that, that group, that demographic. But Ricky Starks looked pretty good here. And Aaron Stevens has been uh, pretty entertaining. It's it's pretty clear he's not going to be in the world title picture. I've talked about this on every podcast so far that they're just they're just tapping into what works with him. They're crossing the intellectual savior gimmick with the method actor stuff, and you know it's still gimmicky, it's still comedy, but that's just what he does. He obviously failed to connect with the audience and impact, so they said, "Hey, let's let's just do what." brought you to the dance uh cole cabana took on james storm and this whew, this was a good one so last week's triple th- not triple threat but six-man tag i thought was the best wrestling match we've seen so far on nwa this was pretty good too and um james storm always does good work though you know that's for those who may have missed them because they just didn't watch impact or you know what he did on nxt i remember watching his two matches on nxt and that that wasn't representation of what he can do. He's just got himself in great shape. And, you know, this match was because Nick Aldis, his team, Team Aldis, won last week. So Cole Cabana got his rematch. And there were shenanigans with Eli Drake and uh, and Anderson and Camille. So there was just a lot going on here. And... We'll see how where the storyline takes it. But Cole Cabana did get his championship back, his national title. So good on him. But as I said, um, really good match. And then uh, main event was Homicide and Kingston versus the Dawsons. And I guess they're Outlaw Inc. I guess I didn't catch that in the first couple episodes. But I'm a really big fan of Homicide and Eddie Kingston. And this match was, you know, not a whole lot different than what it was last week, but they did get their win. So Homicide and Kingston won. I was worried they were going to lose because I didn't really want to see the Dawson's in the title picture. I want to see Homicide and Kingston back in there. So even though they put their number one contendership on the line, they won the match. And after that, the Rock and Roll Express came out and there was a brawl. So, you know, that as I keep talking about throughout the podcast about appealing to a younger audience you know the rock and roll express obviously is going to appeal to a much older audience but they definitely got a pop when they came out and you have to believe that they're going to have some kind of world title or tag team title match coming up so good episode of nwa overall really enjoyed it and as i said i haven't quite captured the magic of the first episode but uh, still still really good stuff uh, no, no real complaints about it. Um, but as I said, opening the show here, it's going to be my last NWA power podcast for the time being. Maybe I bring it back a little bit later if I feel like I have the time for it and that, that I see the growth in NWA 
then I would love to do that. So thanks for listening. Thanks for writing with me. If you, if you missed, if you're listening on a streaming format and you missed the first couple episodes, uh, I apologize. I didn't realize, um, well, the first episode uploaded, but the second and third, I believe did not upload to the streaming formats. So I really apologize for that. But if you have interest in listening to those, uh, you can just check out the Impact Lounge on YouTube and you'll be able to check them out there. Um, But if not, all good. This is BQ and I'll talk to you next time with the B-Side Podcast. Talk to you in peace.